Hello. Hi ladies. Happy Wednesday. I hope you can hear and see me okay. Oh, oh, that was interesting. My screen just completely went white. Um, yeah, so hi, how are you doing? If you are catching this masterclass live, give me a wee hashtag live in the comments. And if you're getting me on replay, give me a wee hashtag replay in the comments. So, tonight, uh, sorry, I have to do my normal. Just checking on another device to make sure that it's coming live loud and clear. Sometimes we're a bit glitchy. Yep, we appear to be streaming live, which is awesome. Right, hope you're all having a fantastic week. Um, what's happening over here at Barassi Towers? We've been dealing with trolls this week, which has been quite amusing. And we have been welcoming in the lovely Tess into our client area this week. We have had some tremendous, like I can't even comment just yet and how tremendous some of the results are coming through from client area but we are on the case we are screenshotting we want to show you some of the epic results that our girls are getting and it's just oh stunning love it i love it i love it um so tonight's master class is all about fear fighting the fear and doing it anyway and the reason that this came about is just due to the normal conversations um that we've been having um with some girls, some clients, some people in the in the in real life outside of this group, um, and I thought it was actually a very very valuable topic for us to discuss. So as I'm going through, if you do have any questions or something's not making sense, you know, just pop it in the comments, um, and hopefully I'll be, I'll be able to um, help you out. All right. So there's a little saying. This was actually when I was doing. Um, I, I read a lot of um, books, business development books, um, coaching books, etc, etc, for, for my own self-development and this phrase had popped up a wee while ago and it kind of made me go, oh, that is brutal. So I'm going to share it with you now and I want, if you think it's brutal, I want you to share, say brutal in the comments, but it's um, the saying is, we tiptoe tip through life hoping to make it safely to death. And that really, really did ring true for a lot of reasons for me. And, and the biggest reason is people sometimes get so paralysed with the fear of change that nothing ever happens. They, they just have a constant, steady tiptoe through life, life. And that's really quite... It's a bit of a kick in the teeth, really, isn't it? It's like It's such a powerful comment but it is so 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 true um and that is yeah it, it, i thought i just thought it was really really such a vast comment but you know fear fear is one of those things that nobody believes they are fearful nobody knows that they're fearful you don't wake up in the morning and go oh my god i'm so scared of change it only comes about through certain you know, self-analysis and certain questions and even somebody t pointing it out to you. But, you know, one of the big things about fear is that it is perfectly normal. You know, it, most people in life have elements of fear. They're, they're scared of something, you know, whether that's, um, I don't know, anything, anything at all, crossing the road, uh, standing the bridge. Um, and when we are faced with a big change, like a big life change or something that's going to change how you think or something that's going to change what you do and something that's going to change how you feel about yourself, then, you know, I think actually fear is a really, really good emotion to have. And it sometimes shows up as a, as many different things. It sometimes shows up as nerves. Sometimes it shows up as like, oh, my head's saying one thing but my heart's saying the other. Sometimes it comes up as, a, as an unknown emotion that maybe people haven't actually felt it before and that can become really, really confusing and like, oh no, I don't want to go there because I, I don't have any past experience with this. So if this is you, put an X in the chat box. You know, this is, like, this is going to be quite a raw masterclass um, tonight because there are going to be 
like I've gone through various workshops around fear and comfort zone and, and how to come out of it and there's every single one of them I've always gone oh that is me when I don't think I have like I don't think I am fearful but I am because everybody is so anyway this might seem be quite raw and if it is resonating with you I want I want to know I want to hear your comments I want to hear your thoughts as we're going through this so you know Fear is a natural part of life because it's the unknown. Fear of the unknown is natural, you know. We, nobody knows exactly what is around the corner for us at all. No one knows. And it's, you know, but we have, with everything else that we do, we have choice and we have options. So with fear, although it's normal and it's probably always going to be there in some frame, some state, we get to choose how we engage with that emotion and that fear and we get to, we, we get to choose actually whether we engage with it or not you know we don't have to engage with it that's entirely our own um decision that we can make internally but like many other changes you know overcoming fear is actually something that we can overcome we can we can make it a, a learned practice we can change how we deal with it and how we react and how we move forward and i think for us women, when we actually realise that we have the power of choice over that, that can become such an empowering feeling that actually, you know, we don't we don't have to engage with that if we don't want to. And some people, it's you know, some people are completely caught up in in nerves or fear or, or worry or or what not. And the reason for that is because it's a habit. You know, being fearful of change or being fearful of doing things differently or being fearful of taking risks or whatever the fear is about, we've actually been conditioned from a kid to be, to, to be fearful. So it's all, it is a habit, it's a learned behaviour, it's a pattern of behaviour, it's something that is inbuilt in us. Um, so if you think about... Um, just think about some of the things people in your environment or what you've seen on the telly or what you've seen in the media or whatever um people have said you know that might feel very very scary to you like you know i'm leaving my safe job to set up a business or i'm going traveling myself for a year or i'm going to go on stage and do karaoke or i'm going to jump in and get some life coaching or some health coaching or I'm going to go and jump out of a plane or I just met this new boyfriend a couple of weeks ago and we're going to get married or you know all of these things all of these phrases are things that we probably all know in real life we may have seen it on the telly or may actually happen to people in in your real life and that's cool but what is the automatic reaction of most people it's not go for it you legend it's not yay that is amazing it's oh i'm quite worried about that be careful are you going to be all right is it really what you want to do and it's it's all that you know second guessing people and and their and their choices that they make and that's because we now believe that taking risks is a bad thing bad thing and it's not you know taking risk can be good sometimes taking a risk does doesn't work you know so we've got to be very very open and honest here that sometimes taking a risk doesn't work out but the thing that we have to understand about taking risks but not doing anything about it because we're scared is because it's actually it's based on nothing because it's based on the future and nobody knows what the future holds you know, you're, we can try and take calculated risks, we can try and second guess what's going to happen, but and we don't. We The only things we know for certain that are going to happen is we're going to die and more than likely we're going to have to pay horrific amounts of tax. They're the only things I think we all now know with it, in real life which is actually going to happen. And it's the same as anxiety, you know, anxiety is... is emotions and feeling that are based off the past which cannot be changed cannot change the past but we still get anxious about things that have already happened even though we've got no control over that because it's already done and it's the same with fear we cannot change you know whatever's going to happen it's in the future and we, do, we don't know we don't know it's all it's all second guessing so this is where 
you know, this fear-based thing, this choice element really comes into its own. So we actually get to choose how we move through life and whether we choose to move through life, you know, terrified of change or terrified of risk and staying stuck in a rut or, you know, constant procrastination or paralysis by analysis and overthinking and, you know, all of these things that are very, very, very common. And I know it's common because I speak to women every single day that are going through this, they've been sitting on, you know, they want to make life changes, they want to have a new life, they want to have a new body, but they've been thinking about it for 10 years or five years and never actually done anything about it other than what feels safe and warm, like, you know, joining Slum World or doing keto or, or whatever it is, you know, it's that's still within that comfort. So we get to choose and, you know, there is a, when you think about, you know, is the fear, is that bigger than the desire? Is the fear of, of I don't know, spending money greater than the goal? Is the fear of having to make changes in your lifestyle, is it greater than what you want to achieve? And if that is the case, then, you know, the desire really isn't your desire. You know, you have to, you have to come to terms with the fact that, okay, yeah, I want it, but I'm a... Am I willing to let myself be held back by fear? Then maybe I need to change the desire, change the goal. But if the desire is greater than the fear, so if the goal is what, what you want to achieve is greater than the fear, then that's where we really have to dig deep and overcome that habit of being scared and getting out of that of that fear place, getting out of that rut. So it's all very well and good, me saying, you know, it's all right to be scared because we all get scared. You know, there's big things that can happen in your life. You can make choices, you can take risks. That's great me saying that, but how do we actually start a new process? How do we create a new pattern of behavior? How do we create a new way of making decisions so that we're not constantly paralyzed by fear or constantly don't think we're worthy of doing the things that, that we want to do? And it's, you know, one of the biggest things is looking at the past you know we know that making decisions can be difficult because we don't know the answers we don't know what's around the corner and you know I spoke to a lady the other day that was desperate to change you know eight plus years of binge eating of yo-yo dieting of crying every time she looked in the mirror but then was absolutely paralyzed by the thought of making changes and saying things like oh yeah but um my job might be at risk next year. Yeah, it might be. And that might not change. You know, everybody's job might be at risk next year. But if we're constantly making decisions based on what might happen, then we're never, ever going to move forward. Ever, ever, ever. Like, you know, why make changes? I'm going to die in 40 years. That's the sa exactly the same scenario. And her fear is because of it means investing in herself and it means actually being committed to what she wants. And that fear was far too great. So how do we overcome it? So the best way to do it is look to the past, absolutely. So, you know, look at a past situation that was scary, that made you nervous. And, you know, for a lot of people, it could be public speaking. For a lot of people, it could be an interview. For a lot of people, it could be um, dancing or singing or, or something like that. And, you know, this, when, I was, when I was doing uh, my notes for tonight's masterclass, you know, I was thinking back to... Well, I went travelling when I was older in comparison to most other people. I think I was 24, 25. And I, I went, I gave up. I left my job, saved up some money, left my job, booked a, an open ticket to Australia with a layover in Singapore. Went myself. My mum and dad are freaking out. My boyfriend at the time, who I dumped to go, was freaking out. Obviously, because I dumped him. Um, but I, I got off the plane in the middle of the night in Singapore. I was just like, what the f am I doing here? I mean, really, it's late at night, you know, in a country far, far, far away from home. Culturally, it's so, so different. Yes, it's probably safer than a lot of places. Didn't even know where I was staying. And this is in the days before mobiles. And, you know, it was just, anyway, when I, at the time, I was petrified. I was absolutely petrified. No idea where I was staying. No, not a single clue who anyone is. But now, when I think back, I'm like, oh, my God, I did that. Oh my god, I did that and I was petrified. I look back and I just go, wow, what an adventure. 
So now that I have got evidence of actually good things happen when you do things that scare you, it means the next time that you make a decision, you know, like, you can make up, you can get a positive outcome of that very, very scary place. So if you can, t if you can provide actual evidence of you doing something of, that has been scary, but then you've turned it into a positive story, and you know, that's actually something that if you watch any of our, um, client testimonial videos, you know, one of the big things that women are scared of is actually investing money in themselves, like proper money, not like a five a week at Slum World, but invest in actual proper money in their own development and their own health and their own well-being. That's a really, really scary thing for a lot of people, but we ask our ladies, what would you say to anyone thinking about it or how, do, how did it feel, how does it feel now about investing? And they're like, oh, nothing, it means nothing. I'm so glad I would do it again in a heartbeat don't even think about it, it's worth every penny. So you know, it's once you overcome that and it turns into a positive story, that whole fear piece in history is gone and it's a new positive story to look forward to. So you know, when we're being scared of, of change or we're fearful of failure, it's such a huge waste of space in your mind. It's such a huge waste of time, energy, emotion, because we get ourselves so caught up in the, but what if, but what if, but what if, but what if, and that goes on and on and on and on to the point of, of paralysis. And when we're paralyzed in that place, when we're overthinking everything and unable to move forward, it just literally means that nothing changes. You know, the current state is the state. That's just the way it is. So if that is okay and if that is acceptable and that is where people are happy to be, then that's absolutely fine. I'm not here to tell people that, that that's where they should be. I mean, I would love if everybody developed themselves over time and had higher standards and performed at a higher level. Absolutely, because there is so much to learn and so much to do and, and whatnot. But if the here and now is good, then that's fine, the here and now is good. But if you take, you know, thinking thinking back to the, the calls that I've had with our, our, our members and, you know, one of the big things that come through is, yeah, but what if I fail? And that's a really valid, valid question, you know, like what if, what happens? What happens if I fail? I'm scared of failing. And that's normal, but what we what we will ask, what I will ask is, you know, will, will you do, you're working one-on-one -on -one with someone, will you do what we ask, will you take our recommendations, will you, will you implement the recommendations that we give you and they're very small and they're very achievable and there's loads of girls in this um, masterclass who are actually clients or have been clients and oh, will you do that or will you run away? And everybody might well, yeah, everybody will say, yeah, of course I will because that's why I'm here, like that, right, fine. And what about if you do feel you're struggling, which there's a good chance you might feel like you're struggling because what we're doing is asking you to do things differently and make different decisions and create different um, pathways in the brain. But will you put your hand up and say, I'm struggling? If you're struggling, you're like, yeah, of course I will. Okay, so you're not, you're gonna do what we ask. You're not gonna hide away. You're not gonna run away, okay? So you've seen you've seen our testimonials, you've seen the before and afters, you've seen the videos, and you believe that you know all of these are good transformations. So realistically, why, how would you feel? Because you're not going to run away. You're going to implement a proven process, and we've got an over ninety five percent success rate. So why exactly do you think you would fail? And that's. You know, when you look at it like that, okay, so the odds are stacking in the favour of success here, aren't they? Because realistically, if we've got an over 95% success rate, 97% success rate, that's a 97% success rate of somebody achieving their goals. 97%, okay? But what are the chances of success of doing nothing? Like, what are the chances of success of waking up tomorrow, you suddenly get the magic formula, and you know exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, what are the chances of that actually happening, right? It's really slim, like 10%, 20% at a push. So what, what are the odds of success here? What are the odds of failure? So you come on board, you've got a 3% chance of failure, or you stay where you are, and you've got a 90% chance of failure. You know, 
when you, you when you stack the odds in a logical logical place that starts alleviating some of that fear of failure and see so that's and of course like I would say 90 percent of the women that we work with have had experiences before where they've lost weight and regained it or they've had a terrible coaching experience with someone else or they have been on the, the, the keto weight watcher some world roller coaster for the past 10 15 years so of course it's natural because to think well I've tried all these things and they've not worked so why is this different but this is different because well just going through it you know because you're working one to one that's 97 percent success rate and you know well then it's like well what if I spend all this money on myself and and then I fail like well why would that happen we've just gone through that you know that your chances of success are 97 percent and the thing is you know the money is money at the end of the day it's a resource it helps people do what they want to do and you know most people have invested well a lot of people have invested thousands of pounds in ship programs in slumming world and shakes and cambridge and all the ridiculous notions and potions and lotions over the years and one of the things that we do also have to remember is that you know there, there is there's failure everywhere we look like you could walk down you could fall into a pothole and break an ankle you could fall down a pothole and bash your head and forget your name and you know loads of bad things happen all the time regardless if you do something or whether you do nothing so I think to overcome it the best way to overcome it is to actually to face it and do it but like overcoming fears like you know first of all look at the history look at areas where you have done something that's got you out of your comfort zone and going well actually that turned out all right so here you go we've got some actual evidence of that happening before but being present being present in the here and now and this can be very very hard when we're caught up in a lot of um imaginary situations and scenarios but what if but what if and but what if and create, creating all these like spider charts and of noise in our head bring it right back to the here and now okay am i do i need to do something differently yes or no yes well okay then i'm gonna have to do something differently no okay well i don't do anything differently i don't change and that's fine but be, being present in the here and now getting out of those imaginary imaginary scenarios and because guaranteed a hundred percent of the time what is in the imagination process is scarier than the facts, scarier than the here and now. So always remember that, that what you're imagining, those arms and legs, bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's one of the reasons why we get just so paralyzed, okay? One of the other big takeaways, and this is actually, speaking from personal experience as well, and I know from a lot of, um, of my friends and, and peers, this has been a big thing is being aware of the environment that you're in as well so first of all who are your people what are they like have they got are they talking negatively are they talking about being scared of doing things have they been stuck in a rut for years and years and years and not moving forward or constantly saying things like when I eventually do whatever but nothing ever changes so have a think about the environmental factors you know are you find are you constantly glued to news 24 and finding sadness and badness in the world and there is you know happiness doesn't sell news is always going to be misery um and we can choose what we absorb we can we can choose what we're hearing and seeing if your facebook feed is full of bad things going on in the world you know you're create that there is fear being created in your mind because that is what you're seeing and that is what you're hearing and there's some really good tips that you can like I've, I now limit my, my news to the 30 minutes of an evening and that is it and I don't do it before bed um, and if it's you know I, I like to know what's going on in the world but I will choose my sources very very wisely Um social media is you know I actually just see quite a lot of positivity through my social media because of the people that I choose to follow of the groups that I'm in etc etc and if I find myself in a place where I'm like oh my god woe is me and oh there's so much sadness and badness I have to I have to actively seek to remove myself from it um, and from your point of view going back to that that power of choice you've got the power to create a new environment around about you that helps you be less fearful that lets you be more um, active 
in, in, in the mind, that's not the right phrase, but helps you be more forward seeking. So using um so using positive language, using positive emotions rather than fear based language and, and, and fear based emotions. So turn the language on its head and think about change as an excitement, you know, um one of our newer ladies, um Karen, I hope you don't mind me using an example, like when we were we we're getting her started, we're getting our on board and call booked and we're organising our welcome pack and whatnot. And she's like, I'm really nervous, but I think it's excitement. And I was just like, that is absolutely one of the best examples of reframing nerves and fear into a positive scenario. And you can choose to do that. You can just say, Oh, I feel really scared. Oh no, but that's excitement. And you can choose what that is. It can be like, oh my God, I'm really, I'm really nervous. Oh, I'm actually really happy. And you get to reframe it. And I think that's really powerful about this feeling of choice. Um, so yeah, so just remember on the other side of that coin, that fear coin, fear or freedom. And it's as simple as that. And you can choose that. And I think when we start remembering that we have the control we have the power we've got the we've got the self-love to be able to design the future and design how we see things and yeah that's hugely hugely empowering so yeah i hope has this resonated with people i've not actually been checking in with the comments let me check so yes live yes patsy that is a brilliant analogy worrying's like a rocking chair it gives you something to do but it doesn't get you anywhere absolutely brilliant claire manning i was actually thinking of you earlier when i was thinking about the whole jumping out of a plane scenario and like that you are insane but i love it i absolutely love it how you just put yourself to these scary situations um sarah yes you don't have anything to worry about you worry about that so that's you know worrying about past experiences and that's actually something that speak to clara about that um, Thai boxing oh interestingly so that's one to dig into a little bit I think in your journaling for sure um, oh Sarah I'm so excited to paddleboard so I bought a paddleboard I've been out in a few times the past couple of months since obviously we live by the sea so it's a wee bit easier but it's so cool so cool um, okay Lisa yeah, yeah nobody will judge you genuinely no everybody's too busy worried judging themselves um all righty yep Karina failure is not an option especially after your midpoint update today oh my goodness woman you're on fire so yeah absolutely freedom freedom hold up your your sword and your blue saltar cross um so if yeah if this has absolutely resonated with you then if you are wanting thinking ready for another way and finally get out of that comfort zone or stuck in a rut or you know that paralysis then pop a heart below pop a heart to show that you know you're ready to stop with the overthinking or the what you've been telling yourself and, and get and actually change and move forward so now is the time to make a stand for yourself you know overthinking doesn't get you anywhere it's like that rocking chair analogy that patsy shared there you know worry 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 overthinking it's giving you something to do but it's not actually getting you any closer to where you want to be so this week we have got three slots left for consultations um and this is you know, a consultation if you're ready to change this is not a commitment to coaching this is a this is a conversation about seeing are you in the right place um, so if you want one of those consultations with me, then pop a heart in the comments below and we'll get a space sorted out for you. As I say, three spaces, extremely limited, 45 minutes, an hour-ish, depending on how much we chat. Um, and as I said, this is about finding you a way forward. This is about finding you a way out of that fearful place and into a new freedom place where you can actually finally achieve your goals and hopefully some of the, the the members that have been commenting will share oh yes Sarah you're ready you don't need us well you do need us because you're in the other group but sorted 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 <laughs> love it fabulous ladies alrighty I am away to finalize dinner so hope everybody is having something lovely for tea tonight. We are having chili, I think. We t I think we have chili quite a lot now, Wednesday, actually. Because I get the, the chicken and the mints delivered to my door. Alrighty, lovely to see some familiar names. I have loved 
talking about this stuff. I love talking about this stuff. I think it's incredible. Um, such how powerful that we can be if we allow ourselves to be powerful. Alrighty. Um, I will speak to some of you very, very soon. Have an amazing evening and take care. Peace out.